we are going to start working on this using the Microsoft Publisher. As you see here, the, everything looks very similar to what you've been using previously, including Microsoft Project, Microsoft the Publisher, as well as Microsoft Word. It has the tabs where you can access all the, the, all the tools, such as text boxes, placeholders, shapes, and so on. Now, the difference is the Microsoft Publisher has what's called a picture placeholder. It's basically where you put a dummy space here and later you replace it with the picture. Um, however, I personally just prefer using shapes to use as placeholders, so that is what I'm going to do. So now let's try creating a one-page infographic about my personal workout music, Best 5. So what, you're, what you want to do as first step is uh, just try, try writing something anyway. The reason being is instead of, instead of trying to perfect things out, um, and uh, try to make a perfect product in the first place. You try to go for the iterative, iterative design. To type down the title here, let's say personal workout music best five, and let's increase the font size here. So now we have our first placeholder. But this is where we just put things down the, without the caring too much about the visual details. We will work on those later. You go to insert shapes and then you click the rectangle, whatever works for you. It can be rectangle, circle, whatever, as long as it serves the placeholder. I select the draw text box, and then I try to put some information down. Um, it can be a title, um, genre, and description. By description, I mean the what this music is and why you like it. You should become familiar using the holding control key and using a mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out to see how your the overall the canvas looks like and feels like. And the same functionality can be accomplished by using the bottom right where you can click on the plus and minus signs to zoom in and zoom out. And now what you want to do is since I have five music I will click on this the picture rectangle as well as the as well as the text box using the shift key and then what I want to do is I can either control C to copy and paste or I can hold control and shift and then you'll notice that this cursor changes into a plus sign and then I will just drag it like this and then you'll notice that the identical rectangle as well as the text box is duplicated and i will do this process four more times to create five music so finally we have all the spaces we have the title we have icons that is complemented by this information that we are going to be using the next step is try to make it pretty uh, with the contents. So as you see here to save time, I already collected the images for the five music that I chose. The understanding of the space is important. So this is the pane where this is the workspace pane where you have access to the your actual works. And this is the white paper where you allocate it and this is what the actual publication will contain. Meaning this gray area that has all these pictures is not going to be included. And I personally just use it as a workspace, just to, as a for draft and just the listing and ideating stuff here. The end product and work product will be this white space only. Personally, what I do is I start with background the color. And for this particular infographic, I want something green. So I will grab a shape, rectangle. And I will put, I will drag it just so that it covers the entire white paper. And of course, it's on the, it's at the very front, so it's going to cover everything that we did, we put previously. So what you want to do is you can use the bring forward and send backward feature to put your, put your objects either to the front or to the back. So if you click send backward once you will see that title, genre, description of the fifth item 
is displayed here. So what happened is that in the in the video in the exercise that we are doing just now, this was the last object that we placed here. So let's say this is a uh, object ten, and and this thing this the rectangle this blue rectangle is object eleven. So when I send backward, it's going to put the object eleven before well after the object 10 so which is why object 10 now precedes the object 11 so basically if you continuously click send backward you're going to notice how everything that we put before shows up and simply it serves as a background basically what i also could have done is just uh send to back which base, which is basically an extreme option where you either put the thing to the very back or to the very front. And the same option is available here in bring to front. So now I have the background and we have, we are going to utilize two functions very often. And that is when you go to the format, there is one that says shape fill. And the second one is the shape outline. So basically shape fill is literally the filling the entire object with the color so you see how it instantly shows a preview of what it's going to look like and i want something um let's use this color for now the green because i like green and the shape outline is basically the outline of the rectangle color and you can do many things with this and for this Perf and my personal preference is just to has a, have it as a no outline. It's going to look transparent. And it's not going to affect the end product anyway because it serves as a background that's covering the entire white space that we're working on. So at this time, you will be saving it once. And then you want to play around with uh, what kind of the font that you want to work with so we have sort of a sort of a color scheme that we are working on and i am sort of playing around and right now green is the main dominant primary color that we are using here and the next important item that we are going to choose is the font um, and uh, while I was brainstorming about this particular paper, I wanted some kind of a round font, which is why I downloaded a free font from the website so that it looks, I, I wanted something round. And there are many free fonts available on the, on the, on the on Google, so you can definitely look it up. And what I want to do is personal workout, we have a lot of space in between the line so what we want to do is I personally prefer to have little space between the lines so we are going to go to the home line spacing and then line spacing options and between lines I will put something like a 0 0.8 um, I want even more spaces to be gone. So 0 0.6 ish. Okay, that looks about right to me for my purpose. And then now what I want to do is I want to put some kind of ribbon here that represents the title. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box. Okay, so what happened here is that this is actually a text, but when I put on rectangle, it there's this option that wraps text, and right now it's basically affecting the text right now. So what I want to do is I want it as a through. So I will click on the get through. And this one so this one will be none. 
through. Okay, so none is the option that you want to go for. So I'm going to send it backward. And then I am going to remove the shape outline because I want to make it look as simple as possible and having these uh, having these outlines don't feel needed at the moment. And then I'm going to say, switch, switch the color of the shape. Um, I'm going to change the color to, let's say, uh, so when you're choosing a color, make sure you think about the contrast, how legible your font, your words are. So for example, this is a horrible choice of color because there is little contrast between the black fonts as well as the blue. This is okay. So typically you want to go for something like, uh, so this is, a, this is one decent color, I think, as well as somewhere around here. However, it doesn't go really well with the green. I think I will go for something like uh, something like this. And now what I want to do, what I'm trying to accomplish here is to make a, make a ribbon here as I mentioned. So what I want to do here, now we now we're going to create the end of the ribbon. So I'm going to create another box here. And that's going to be something like this. And I click none so that it doesn't have any wrapping effects. Now here, what I want to do is uh, basically send to backwards. And this is the ribbon, the back part with ribbon that I have. And here, the simple option, what we can do here is basically a home for my painter. And then, so I click on the previous rectangle that we already created. And then we are going to click on the new rectangle, which is indicated by the, this, the dotted lines. So when I click it, you will notice that the same format, including color and the outline is applied here as well. But here, when you see, um, it doesn't really do anything. You don't know what's going on. So here, since this ribbon, this end part of the ribbon is at the back, there should be some kind of shadow. And what I want to do is click on something that's more, that has more shadow basically. Now this looks too exaggerated. This looks reasonably okay. You want, you want to choose something that's uh, reasonably close. And I think this works well. This actually looks like a shadow, kind of, I think. So here, you have a shadow. And I am going to do the identical thing here. Notice how there's a guideline that shows if things are aligned. Again, I will go to format, send backward, send backward. Um, and then, you know how there are the edges in the ribbon. So now I am going to go to insert, shape, select a triangle, drag a random size, I guess, and then what you want to do is you hold shift and then rotate and you will notice that it's going to rotate in 90 degrees. And what happens if you drag, if you rotate without shift key is basically it's going to, to free rotate and it's going to look very subtle. For example, this is, this is a 90 degrees or the zero degrees. So it's going to look awkward and wouldn't fit the ribbon here. So I will hold shift and then rotate. Now again, there won't be any text wrapping here. I will click on the outline, no outline. And then here, what I want to do is to accomplish the ribbon effect. I will shape fill and then use, a, use the sample fill color. 
Now this is very common in Photoshop. What it's going to do is it's going to extract the color that you choose and then apply to this particular object, which is a triangle. So I click fill, I click on the color of this background. And then notice how it looks like a ribbon now, actually. And I'm going to do the same thing by, well, you can either control C, copy and paste, or you can also control shift, drag to duplicate. And then you're going to hold shift and then rotate. So here you go. As you see here, we have the ribbon that we created without any kind of photoshops. Um, if you, and if you want to add some more details, you want to make uh, connections here. So what I'm going to do here is create this right triangle. Make something like this. Again, shape outline, no outline. So in the modern design, the preference is totally up to you. I personally have no outlines and that is indeed what uh, many, many designs, many app designs are going for as you might have noticed from the apps. And then I'm going to make it match here. So now you see it actually looks connected and and again you want to put some shadow here and I will I think I will use something like this or this uh, so choose what you think would fit and then I want to I will have to flip it uh, 180 degrees. So I am looking for the change edit shape. No, it's not here. Okay, here's the rotate. And you want to flip horizontally. Good, I learned something too. Because typically I just do it manually. And then you're going to drag it using the guideline help so that it looks like so that it matches here um, so here we already created a ribbon here finally so far we've accomplished the following so within less than 20 minutes we managed to the, create a general layout of what the infographic will look like and also we managed to create this ribbon without any graphic tools and this is all just by using Microsoft Shape. So Microsoft Shapes is a, well, it's a manual process, but with right knowledge, it's very easy to use, very quick. And sometimes, sometimes using basic tools that you have are more than enough than using very complex tools, which takes a, takes a significant learning time and processes. Um, although I do want to mention actually that there's a secret that, that I was hiding. So when you go to shapes and then when you go to a ribbon, there is actually a banner. The exact same thing that you're looking for. Well, the one that I created manually. And if you look at this uh, yellow, the yellow, the diamond, you can actually drag it to suit your needs. Which, which I'm sure that if you knew about it, then you've been a time saver. The only concern is that sometimes these kind of presets are literally presets, meaning that there is a limited flexibility that's available to you. So, which is why I just wanted to demonstrate the power of Microsoft Shapes by the manual creating this ribbon. I could apply different sh colors to the front and the back. Whereas in this case, this is not possible. So now what we need to do is uh, create this, I the deal with these icons and then do something here to make it more visually friendly. Um, and to save time, I already 
filled in all the information that's necessary, including the title, the who sang it, and uh, just general description, some kind of one one line sentence about uh, that particular music. Um, and for each icon, correspondingly, I listed all the images here. So in here, what I typically want to do is, as I previously mentioned, I want to make the text as easily recognizable as possible, which is why I will be applying some kind of colors right, or anything like that as a background. And there are several options, several ways of doing this. Number one, you can go, you can click on the text box, go to format, and then fill the shape. And then as you see here, you will notice that it text box changes its color. Or you can also use the presets. Well, the thing is, again, I'm not a fan of uh, using the presets or the or the things allotted here because I want more flexibility to do things more manually. So the other option that I can do is I can also insert the shape. And let me see the rounded rectangle shapes here. I will apply like this and then send to backward. And it serves as a background already. And the uh, outlines, I will remove it as usual. And shape fill, you can do whatever you want. Let me just do something like this. So if you want to get a overall feel of what the actual infographic will look like, again, you can do the same thing for all five times. The important thing when you're doing this design process is that you don't you don't do not try to pay too much attention to visuals and the accuracy precision at the moment. For example, right now I'm just randomly randomly just placing the boxes here just to get a general feel of what it's going to look like. And uh, as you see here, they are not aligned correctly. There's the uh, spacing is not the spacing is not consistent either. But I'm just uh, doing it anyway just to get a general feel of it. And this is one of the this is one of the mistakes many people make who are especially using PowerPoint and are not familiar with the features. They focus so much on the on making things look perfectly at the beginning one by one that uh, it consumes so much time. So my general advice is first just to get the layout layouts out there, just put whatever shapes, text and everything to see if it actually looks friendly. Oh, and the, what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to click on one box, hold control, click on all of them, and then I will send it backward. And now you see all the texts that's showing up properly. Now I need to put these images here, but this way is well, basically inefficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, use a picture placeholder. The advantage of picture placeholder is that it's going to put all the images consistently in one size. So I click in the middle and then from a file, I have all the images ready. So I will select the Dream Theater and you see there's a black boxes that's surrounding. This is the crop. So what it does is that as you see here, you will notice that this icon is not perfectly, uh, it's, it's not a perfect square, but it's a, it's a rectangle with a longer width. And this picture placeholder is going to crop it or cut the image so that it becomes a square. And I will probably put a line in the center, something like this. And then if you click outside the box, it's going to make an image like this square. So now I am going to replace this with this thing. Um, make this smaller so that it adequately fits the entire infographic. Now I will hold Control and Shift, duplicate, 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 
duplicate. At this point, again, I remind you, do not worry about this kind of spacing alignments, um, even if they are not uh, equally distributed. There's a very simple function called the align that we will be using eventually, or we can even do this manually. Next, we are going to change each picture by clicking right, change picture, change picture from file, and I will repeat the process. There are many ways to achieve this, um, and I am personally just doing it manually because, because I can do it very fast enough and it's not difficult to do so. Um, I want the Warcraft title to show properly. Okay, what I'm going to do here is uh, change picture, reset. Okay, that's not what I want. Um, change. Okay, I have the crop option. This is what you need to click. And what I want to accomplish is put the Warcraft show up here. Yes. This is exactly what I was looking for. Now I can remove this. So this is what we have so far. So at this point, there are a few options you can play around with, which is one, number one, you can play around with this kind of text, see if there's anything that works better, um, see for example, I just apply more the bold fonts to see if it looks more pleasant to the eye. Or one of the things that I typically do is uh, putting the title, putting the music title in a different box again. Let me show you what I mean. So I just copy the second box, second round box, and then put it here. And then I will change the color so that it's something like this let's say then I will make it smaller and then I will place it here place it on. so do you now see what I just did I created a se separate uh, round box just for the title and then I can then I can have it like this that now I assign this a separate box but as you see green and blue kind of looks look uh, similar in terms of color and it's hard to distinguish to be honest which is why there a few options you can go for are you can either change the sh color so that it's something different you can choose any color you want as long as it's not something like black like this or you can choose a similar color that you chose for your title so now this this goes back to the graphic design and the color theory aspects but typically in a powerpoint slide or any kind of infographic it's recommended that you do not use more than three colors in one slide um, un un unless you're trying to make a really visually colorful slide for the for educational purposes or if that color is actually fitting to the theme of your presentation or infographic however in this case for example if you have too many colors it starts to lose the cohesiveness that it doesn't look consistent um, which is why you typically try to stick to the color that you already used before and the no more than three possible. So in this case, I will choose the same color which I used here. The experience that I'm showing you right now is basically, I just apply what I think might work and see if it actually looks pleasant to the eye. So now what I do is uh, for the sake of simplicity, I will click on this box, the one in the light yellow and the white box. I will group it which is done by clicking right and then group. Now it's 
Well, now what happens is that these two objects are now in one. So when I drag one, you'll notice that everything moves. And of course, this can be ungrouped as well. So I am going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply to all rest of the four boxes. So I will just erase this. And then I will copy, paste, 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 paste. And then I will select these four using the control or the shift key and then send backwards. Excuse me, that's bring forward, backwards. There you go. Okay, so compared to when I only had white boxes, this actually looks better, hopefully, in my personal opinion. As you see, it has a separate yellow box that distinguishes, that emphasizes that this is the name of the music. And we are going to try to decorate this now. This is the most important part, which is where we actually polish and try to make it look professional. First thing, is to have some kind of border or have some ways to distinguish this uh, icon separately from the background uh, to make it more noticeable and the more the pretty basically the second thing to do is uh and of course as you see here the all the texts are not organized at all so i will need to do something about the all this text to make it look more pretty and noticeable most importantly and the lastly, I want to do something about this uh, background because right now the green color basically filled everything and right now it, it looks okay but I'm not, I'm not sure if filling in the entire paper with green is, uh, is good. Um, so here what I would do is uh, as soon as I have such thoughts, I just apply it right away. I just see what it's going to look like. Um, what do you look like if I do this? Or what would it look like if I do this? And and right now I'm I, I am kind of leaning towards doing it this way instead of having it full, or having it uh, cover one side. Um. I could also try doing this, um, which is which is also actually a very interesting option. So. I will see what works the best and the best way to accomplish that is uh, basically the pressing you would be pressing F12 in the Microsoft Publisher and it's going to save the document as and you will be trying it as a PDF or the JPEG uh, what whichever format that you're going to share your final product as so if you save it it's going to show you the final product um, and uh, it looks okay interesting um, it, it, it does look pleasant I will try saving another one now this time I will the, I will fill the left side with green and have the texts quite have white spaces and I will call it music 2 PDF so basically the message I'm trying to deliver to you is that you need to try various methods various uh, you need to try various looks to see what works the best for you and when you get to the point where you're not satisfied with the either option that is the point where you did actually did a decent job and uh, you can stop there yeah, I would be going for music 2 option which is to have a uh, have it like this using this way where the green box is covering this part so let's see if I can do something about this. So I have this triangle which I created before. So I will fill it with uh, white since this area is white and to make it look like a ribbon. And now what I think I'm going to try is uh, I will fill this picture border with um, with yellow, I think, or this, or the same color as these ones. So it will be weight or picture. Okay. Now I know it's not exactly this color, so I will need to go to picture border 
use the align color and then apply and here you go I have this and what I want to do is to apply to the rest four is I touch this right it is the format painter so I click on an end product object for my painter and I apply to the rest of the icons that I have and then this is and then we previously we previously talked about how there are uneven spaces right so here what you want to do is select them all at home there is a feature called align now this is where you can either align everything center middle or distribute the spaces evenly and this is the option that we are looking for and since we have listed the items vertically we want to distribute it vertically so if you click this you will notice that the space is evenly distributed now um, so let's close well let's close what is open and uh, let's try saving it again to see what the end product will look like and uh, in terms of actual layout and everything I, I think it actually looks decent I think I, I think it looks good I think hopefully um, and now what I want to do is now we need to take care of uh, this part which is uh, these music titles and what I want to do is here you noticed how I s in the middle in the for this music the Pluto I separated out the title and the contents for flex more flexible editing and this is what I would want to do for the rest of the stuff as well so I cut it and then I paste it back something like this same as well so now 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 this is the thing the, right now the process that I'm doing looks inefficient and that's true and it is because I was experimenting how things are going to work at the beginning so I did not foresee that I will need to separate the title from the contents and that is because I did not expect myself to create this box that's separated with the title until now so this is why the so right now I'm, I'm sort of doing impromptly impromptly which is why the, I am sort of doing a little bit of the manual processing but the other option is you can brainstorm everything from the beginning with a very strict process and that way you will be eliminating unnecessary actions but again having a proper having a very strict process restrains you from flexible editing if you have a better idea in the end or at a later stage of your asset development then you have a problem with the editing because the, you've already gone so far that it's not that your process is not flexible enough to accompany your client's needs anymore well anyway excuse me let me cut this and I will put it here hydrogen and the last one just bear with me I am almost done oh man and I uh, yes I am also selecting wrong boxes human two okay so now I have the basic layout ready for the editing what you in terms of fonts you want to have the consistency across the entire the design you do not necessarily need to set your contents fonts the same one as your title it's not always necessary just like in ter just like when it comes to fashion you, you don't need to wear everything the same color for consistency it's sometimes the diversity of colors that actually make the thing look go along more the smooth more looks better um, so I can for example try the century gothic 
or whatever funds the future okay future might look decent too um just that just for the because it's the personal workout music best five i personally wanted something more athletic feeling of mu of um font however this font choice process is uh this is where you have to consistently consistently think about it throughout the day experiment and and make sure you do not spend too much time on it when your primary the responsibility is to create to make a business presentation or deliver the message of course when you when, when you're a graphic designer or if you're in charge of the marketing for example then this kind of choice of uh, font selections or images are going to be extremely important however when you are a business student for example that's trying to make a clean clean and the easy to read visually friendly documents such as this one then you you will get more benefits by delivering the right message in a succinct, succinct manner that with a decent font than the spending over several hours just trying to make the font look good or the trying to play with the color so here i will i think i will go with the future and here you know what I think? So you know what I think I'll do? Initially, I put the singer here. But what if I just do this? Green theater. Uh, theater. Theater. And then I will move this. And I will center the content. And I will put it here. Increase the font size, increase font size. And let me see the end product. See what it looks like. PDF I it. Okay, so it looks it looks okay. I don't mind. So I will apply the same to the rest so I will have a Danganronpa. font was a Ubuntu title ultimate 24 okay 24 Ubuntu 24 Pluto, video tape. Ubuntu twenty four. Hotline Miami. And lastly. I will be fixing Ubuntu 24. Human Warcraft 2. Okay. And then move the title, remove the title, move the title, remove the title. Center using Control E, Control E, Control E. And then the future of font 20. Let me see if I can uh, do the font for my painter. And I will do the identical process to the rest so that everything has the same font style and size. And then I will center it using the align center. And then I will manually sort of play around so that I can put the I can drag it sort of like along the middle. Okay. So now this is a, this is the last part of the process where you sort of polish and then try to make it look neat try to make things uh, 
aligned within the box. And one thing I also need to do is uh, I haven't aligned these to the left. So I will align left. Notice how everything sticks to the left. Okay, so what I want to do is that I have a bit of a spacing here. So I will bring them up. And then I will sort of drag it, drag some of the parts of our music list down so that we can use the space more efficiently. Okay. So this is the final product that we have right now called the music infographic.